Hi, I'm Jay Hallam and this is Back to Basics Show Jumping. Over the course of this series, you're going to see everything from the warm-up to poles on the floor and jumping a whole set of fences. From four-year-old horses to older horses. So I'm very excited to welcome Jane from Bailey's, the marketing manager here today, to have a little chat with us about nutrition. Yeah, it's great to be here. And actually, now that it's started to rain, it's quite a nice um, chance to have a little break and have a little chat. Absolutely. So I am a, uh, a Bailey's representative. My horses are on Bailey's and I think they look fantastic. So um, I was going to discuss with Jane about what my horses have fared and what diets are maybe suitable for different types of horses. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have very good forage, don't you, um, Jay? So mm. yours, yours, most of their diet is actually basically your good forage. Yeah, yeah. And obviously I'm very lucky that you guys test the quality of the hay and haylage that we feed yeah. each year, just so we can make sure that we're getting the same stuff for them yeah. on a year-to-year on a -year -year basis. Have you got haylage mostly or uh yeah we tend to because we were struggling to find a constant good quality supply of hay we fundamentally feed haylage but then we have got other horses that do struggle with the haylage that we keep on the hay right um th those that tend to get a little bit loose and stuff it's not as you know not every horse can take that's right haylage yeah i mean the thing the thing to remember with haylage is is that the way it's made is that it has a slightly higher moisture content than hay which yeah. is obviously dried which is why then some horses um Generally, they, they, their systems do adapt, but if, if they struggle, um, the higher moisture content can sometimes make them a little loose. Yeah. Um, there are other things we can do about that, but having, having, being able to have a choice is actually quite useful when you've got a range of horses like you do. Yeah, absolutely. And we also try to aim to have as many with straw as a bedding than the shavings because you know, I'm quite happy for them to pick through a little bit of the straw yes, and absolutely. have that little bit of roughage, yeah. which I think is so important, which is easily missed out sometimes yeah. if they're on a shavings bed. Yeah, I think that's that's true. Certainly for the, the perhaps the poorer doers, the ones that perhaps struggle a little bit more with condition or, um, you know, if they if they perhaps they finish their haylage at night, at least they've got their bed to browse around. Obviously, if you've got a, a real fatty, then that perhaps is not such an option and you certainly don't want them gorging their straw. But it is just a nice sort of little backup, knowing that they can sort of mooch around and, and pick and keep something going through. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a good plan. So obviously we've got uh, in the middle here the performance balancer number 19. This would probably be, well, it is yeah. the main product that we feed my horses. Yeah. The, you know, from the horses that are four years old and the ones that are competing at Grand Prix level, um, people find it very hard to believe that they yeah. get a cup full of this twice a day and that's about it. Or a bit it. more. <laughs> or a bit more, depending yeah. on the horse. Yeah, depending on the workload and so on, isn't it? Um, yeah, but... but we found that because, again, the forage content that the horses have, yeah, so basically your forage is providing your fibre calories. Yeah. And if, if they're doing well from a calorie point of view on the forage, then they just need what's lacking from the forage, which is your quality protein, your vitamins and your minerals um, and antioxidants. And it all supports performance. And from your point of view, helps build that all important muscle that you're working on in the training that we're, that we're filming today. So, um, and it, and it all does that without extra calories, which is the crucial yeah, point. Yeah. And obviously some of my other horses, because when we're in a competition environment, I want them to have that energy. I want them sharp. What I tend to do is towards the big competitions, I build them up and I put them onto a mix. I actually put mine onto the racehorse mix because I want them yeah. pumped and yeah. crazy. And it's a, a fast release yes, energy right. for the horses. Yeah, so that's that's one of our highest calorie mixes and it's got the, the greatest proportion of oats. But yeah. um, for for someone sort of perhaps like me that just wants that effect, 
I'd probably go for something like our competition mix, which has which has got oats in but isn't quite racehorse power. Okay. Um, and the way you're working it is that you're introducing it gradually over sort of 10-ish days in preparation to the yeah. to the show, aren't you? And you may not even get to the full amount of mix. Perhaps you've only giving them sort of half measures, but you'd keep your half measures of, of balance are going in. So it's a half and half scenario. So the balance, their diet stays balanced. Yeah, because when we go around and we do the feeds with the horse having some chaff and this, it makes it very easy when it comes to doing the feed board because it's a standard yeah. throughout the yard. And then each individual horse has an addition uh, if need be. Yeah. So we would have a, the ones that aren't maybe such good doers we would um, give them some of the Ease and Excel, yeah. um, which is quite good. But am I right in thinking, somebody once told me that if you've got a horse that's a good doer that needs a bit more energy, sometimes giving them some mix is basically the equivalent of giving them a Mars bar. Yes, you, you, it, it is, it's quite a good analogy really. Basically, if you've, if you've got a good doer, uh, especially one that's perhaps already carrying plenty of condition, and then perhaps as a, as a result is a little bit lacklustre and a bit lethargic and you want a bit more pep, your obvious sort of idea is to go to a competition mix, some oats or something, just to pep them up. But if their original diet is, is not balanced, then you literally are just kind of just piling in the chips and chocolate without actually sort of making sure that everything else is, is there. And it won't necessarily make them, give them more energy, it will just go to their waistline. So what you need to do with with the with the fatties, so to speak, or the ones that are you know don't need to put on any more weight, is actually to use something like the balancer, which is low calorie, high nutrients. So make sure they're getting everything they need in their diet, and don't forget um, vitamins and minerals, antioxidants. They're all involved in actually releasing the energy content of the diet. So if they're deficient in vitamins and minerals, they can actually feel lacklustre, even though actually they're getting plenty of other calories in their diet. So if we balance the diet by giving them a low calorie balancer, quite often they feel a bit better anyway, and you don't necessarily need to put in your, your extra pep just to get that bit more energy. So um, yes, you're, yeah, it's quite a good analogy, that one. Yeah, it's really interesting because so many people that, I, that come to me for training have this, you know, that they're very good doers and yeah. they're trying to get them sparked up and yeah. a little bit more yeah. forward and everything. And I think, you know, it's a common problem for people to go the slightly wrong way, you know, That's the wrong it. way so, about it. So using the balancer, make sure, you know, it, 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 their diet is balanced. They're getting a low calorie, but high nutrient balanced diet. And then if you still want a bit more sort of sparkle, a bit more, <laughs> you can actually use small amounts of competition mix or small amounts of oats. And again, a little bit like you, introduce it when you know you've got something coming up. Even if, even if it's sort of coming to you for a lesson and you know you're gonna want a little bit more energy. Yeah. So sort of, if you keep a little bit going in the diet, just a tiny bit so their system is used to digesting it, yeah. and then you can increase it sort of the day before and then drop it back down again when you're having a you know an easier few days and yeah. and as you say it works works for you with your with your top horses so um, as long as you're in control and not letting the calories get out of hand it's great for good doers as well that's fantastic and it's really lucky that you have such a great team of nutritionists to come out and help people and assist people and I think am I right in saying that people can you know, pick up the phone. And Absolutely. I mean, you know, now we're, we're, you can direct message us and you can email and phone. And, um, you know, now that we can, you know, look at photos even, you know, yes, it's great to come out and look at horses, but there's so much we can do on the end of the phone or whatever. So definitely, if anybody's got any queries at all, um, just just get in touch. Um, but also, um, you did you did mention the um, Ease and Excel cubes, and they're something that you find when you've got something that's lost a bit of condition, or you want to build up a bit, that you you find you can feed quite easily, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the the, the horses that do tend to get a little bit lighter uh, on the Ease and Excel in the yard. So I've I'm quite lucky that I normally work between three or four different feed bags basically yeah. and I try and keep it as simple as possible yeah, really and I, ideal, I think yeah. it's the best way yeah so, so the thing with those is is that you can 
because they're all they're high fiber they're kind of the opposite of your um competition mix they're all high fiber high oil so they don't whiz them up they yeah. they they shouldn't affect the temperament at all so you can feed feed plenty of them to get the condition that you need um without them going to the horse's heads at all so yeah. oh fantastic and when you're away at competition do you other than sort of the ones that you tend to sort of want to feed to be a little bit lively or do you do anything different when you're there or when you're traveling um yeah i mean I, I make sure that the horses always travel with hay nets yeah uh i you know i kind of do everything with gastric ulcers and colic in mind yeah. for the horses when it comes to the the, the whole, whole, whole aspect of the horse really so we always travel with hay nets i want them always kind of being trickle fed so they're yeah. just constantly having something yeah. to eat i don't like them being stood no. around for long periods of time no, that's um good. and I, you manage to take your own forage when you go to yeah the we always we always i very very rarely unless we're away and i can't take everything yeah with us yeah. i travel and take all my own forage to the competition so the horses aren't having a change of diet yeah which is really important because actually even forage even changes in forage can some horses are very sensitive to it so being able to take you know your forage from home is is yes. really important it's fascinating it's great to sort of talk and and hear about the sort of practical actual you know in the situ you feeding the horses because obviously you know we um we know how it should be but it's good to hear that you know actually it works in practice as well yeah absolutely well like i say i try and keep it basic but i'm also very lucky to have you guys at yeah. the end of the phone and yeah uh, i know that lorna one of your representatives from the company is brilliant at coming yeah. out and She's just keeping really an eye on things yeah. for me Jane, thank you so much for coming today. You're it's welcome. been very helpful. Thank you.